This is the one that we have been waiting for. Christina Christick and Ellen Ryan to take on England's Sophie Tolchard and Amy Farrow in a rematch of what was the most epic match of bowls that you will see. The Commonwealth Games final last year was one of the best exponents of this sport that we've seen in a very long time time it went to an extra end and Alan Ryan won it with the final bowl of the contest the emotions afterwards rang true on screens across the country not just in bot in the bowls world but all around Australia it was sensational I was lucky to be there and so was this man joining me Val Febo Barry Lester Baz how are you and how excited are you I'm very excited especially after that intro well done mate you nailed it yes it doesn't get much better than this you know, I'm sure players pre-match would be just uh, revisiting uh, some parts of that match and just saying, you know, we've got a bit to play for here, both to reaffirm our position and and for England to get that sort of uh, feeling back of getting one up over the, the team that took that glory away from them back there at Birmingham last year. But all in all, four good players in blustery conditions. We've said that a lot the last week or two, but it is really blowing a gale now and... Things will be tough out there, Val. They certainly will be. Matt Lucas is taunting us at the moment with the horn. Thank God I have the headphones on because it blocked out a lot of the sound then. But here we are. This is, and Baz, you mentioned that the English stars will be out there and they've already won a world championship title this tournament with the women's fours on this very green uh, on Saturday afternoon. They've adapted. They've overcome on how it's run. The Rixons pushed them this morning, but how would, this is a different kettle of fish because these are the two that stole the victory from them last year. They were ahead by a long way. I think it was something like 12-3. Australia got it back to 16-12. They levelled it at 16-all, and then it was 18-all going into the final end, and the Aussies got the job done. But how would they be feeling getting into this match? Because obviously that is a tough and a bitter pill to swallow. Yeah, and unfortunately... You know, in, I guess in bowls and as, and especially this format, um, there's always uh, uh, usually a winner. I know that both teams can come away today with a draw, but not that day in Birmingham. Someone had to win, and it was unfortunate. That and that's right. And there was an extra end to determine the match. So play, players today will know that there are three options: win, lose, or draw. Both teams will be trying to get that win, but. On that particular day, when you go back there, beautiful sunny day, not one drop of rain right through the Commonwealth Games for the course of the Bowls Championship, which is an absolute rarity. Awesome. And all four players making the most of kind conditions and getting the job done. And Alan Ryan, she stood behind that mat for a good 20 or 30 seconds, composed herself and played a gold-winning bowl for her country. And, and uh, it would be... Well remembered for years to come, but as you said, her opponents, well, they've won plenty of gold, and that came in the women's fours only a couple of days ago. Certainly did, and pardon me, it was 11-2, not 12-3 in that match, but the Aussies got it to a 16-12 lead with a big four, dropped a four the next end, and the drama in that on that one day in Birmingham was at its highest ebb, but right now the situation sits as... Sophie Tolchard and Amy Farrow, they need, well, they just need to keep winning. They're at four wins, zero losses and a bye. 12 points, Australia, three wins, one loss and the bye. The score difference for the English superstars, plus 65, Australia at plus 32. So a win here for the Aussies would go a long way in determining that these are the two nations that will probably go through. Yeah, and the English pair, they'll be monitoring that. Well, no doubt, especially if there's some trends throughout this match that present potentially dropping any numbers. They'll be monitoring the fact that they've got that buffer of 33 shots. Yep. And uh, and that's a great buffer. And that all goes a long way to trying to finish on top of the pool. They've got a game in hand, plenty of shots. And as we see there, all six deliveries, oh, uh, all five deliveries outside the front one in that scoring zone, give him a chance. And that south easterly breeze... Is uh, is very strong, coming right across the venue. So the players playing in this particular direction with their first end back to the south. They're playing into a slight sort of corner breeze, if you want to put it that way. And um, they've done pretty well so far. That day in Birmingham saw Sophie Tolchard get the wood on Christina Christick early. And then Chrissy started to work her way into the match and Amy Farrow and 
Ellen Ryan enjoyed what was a titanic battle of the skips. Neither could really get in there, and Amy actually saved game with the final bowl of the regulation 18th end. Was down two, cut it down to one with a weighted shot. And then Ellen Ryan with the final bowl of the extra end that we will remember for eternity here in the bowls community in Australia because it was such a monumental and a momentous occasion to see Australia top the medal tally. And Ellen Ryan, the first bowler, male or female, to win the singles and pairs at the same Commonwealth Games. It's quite remarkable. Yeah, and today, much, much different conditions. Oh, yeah. This event, obviously, now, as opposed to last year, Southern Hemisphere, Tiff Dwarf Grass. No big trees to worry about right under the on the grand under the grandstand last year. Sophie nice. Tolchard, thirty one years old, Baz and Amy Farrow, forty two. Yeah, Sophie's uh, resume speaks for itself, claiming gold in the two fourteen Glasgow Commonwealth Games in the triples, defeating Australia on that day against Karen Murphy, Lindsay Clark and Kelsey Cottrell. Coming away with a, a gold there at well, that would have been age 22. So a gold medal for, uh, uh, sorry, Sophie Tolchard at a very early age, 22 years of age. So amazing effort for Sophie. And uh, she's been entrenched in that uh, English team ever since. And you look at the resume of Amy Farrow and what a resume it is. She's a four-time Commonwealth Games medalist in 02. She was... Bronze in the pairs, 06 in Melbourne at Darabin, in the uh, bronze in the triples. One gold in the pairs in 2010 in Delhi, and then Birmingham last year, the pairs. But the World Outdoor Championships, the World Bowls champs, a gold in the fours in Leamington Spa, 19 years later, from 2004 to 2023, she reclaims that title. Big weight from Ellen Ryan here in the opening end of this contest. She's underneath... One to England. Yes. So good start for the English. And this match, it's it's actually, it is an absolute pleasure to be sitting here alongside you today, Baz, at Club Helens Vale and Locke, because, you know, all three of us were in the stands last year watching on as Chrissy and Alan saluted in Birmingham. But to be here in broadcast and to, to call it, I think, is something that we can't take for granted. This is a massive occasion the rematch of one of the bowls matches of the century to date. Yeah, and and that particular end, um, you know, there was so much happening. Uh, I know Christina, she, um, Alan's, I think it was first or second bowl, I think it might have been. Alan's first bowl, that's right, getting on the mat down. She played a, a weighted shot, cracked the head open, spat the jack out to the side, and well, pretty much the rest is history. Just missing with a second and then getting the job done with a third. But arguably, her, even though her last bowl was the match winner, some would say that the tougher shot in terms of um, getting a result was the first bowl. It was such a tough shot to play, down on the head and cracking a, that jack out into the wing and then coming up with the goods with their last. But uh, Alan Ryan, I can still remember hearing Christina Christic yell out, Alan, as uh, as she let the bowl go and she knew she was close. And, and um, then when Alan screamed out, Chrissy! Uh, yeah, uh, and you never hear Ellen make any sort of <laughs> no. noise on the green, so just absolutely sensational. And the beauty straight after um, it, all the all the noise and all the celebrations happened, it was great to see the uh, all four players embrace each other. Um, England could well and truly hold their head high. My God, did they play so well? They played it in a great spirit yeah. as well, and one you know, of the best performed games and best spirited games you'll see. Correct, Bell. And I think Amy and Sophie, they won so many fans that day because of the way that they handled the, the defeat. And that would, have, that would have cut them deep. There's no doubt about it. They may show it on the outside, but, you know, these results, they, they hurt. But they handled themselves to, towards the general public, that is, with utter grace and humility. And they were absolutely magnificent. And if, if you wish there could have been a draw in any sort of sporting event before, that was probably the one. Yeah, spot on, Val. And I, uh, when I came home from the Commonwealth Games, and obviously 
having spir- experience playing on that TV rink with the big crowds, I, f- I found one of the best things I experienced, and I know a lot of the Aussies did as well, as well uh, how great the crowds were. The uh, Quite often you would hear from the, the – well, you, you could – interact with a lot of the uh, spectators in and around the grandstands, but you would also see the English crowd as Christina comes in, draws a great shot there, so one down to one up, but a lot of the English crowd were clapping the overseas or the opposition's bowlers, so I thought the crowd would have been a little bit more um, biased to England, And um, to be fair, but uh, hats off to everyone who attended and even the players and a lot of people, they made us feel like we were part of um, being sort of like almost localised over there and we were meted and greeted so nice and the, the crowds were just great. And, um, yeah, ap- atmospheres like that just don't get any better. They don't. And the Australian, the little gold contingent that we had down there was extremely loud. Karen Murphy, I reckon, almost went and interrupted the bronze medal match that was going on across right at the other end of the green. She ran that far to celebrate. New Zealand and uh, Malaysia were involved in that, I think. So Alan Ryan holding one out on a really nice line. You can see a beautiful drawing arc there out to the paint. It's seven feet off the centre rink, getting back easily with that that breeze. That's Alan two. Ryan, that's that'll two do. Australia. That will do. Now, Australia in that match last year did not wrangle the lead until the 13th end in that match. They went up. That's when they scored that famous four and then dropped that four. Went down 18-16. Seesawed and ebbed and flowed. Big weight. Amy Farrow. Well, she's got... Oh, she's flicked one out. Didn't think, see it that way, but... I think about seven or eight bowls moved then. So good intent. That's what the uh, English women did in the fours final. Drove first and clear plan of attack. Drive or draw in blustery conditions. She's got a very, very good drive, Amy Farrow. Com Games gold medalist, world champion, and Alan Ryan. It's another one in there. Beautifully done. This might entice Amy Farrow to go even harder. Yeah, that's right, Val. Looking for both bowls clean, ideally, for for Amy here. If not, perhaps try and get the split or punch and kick back. She's going to get down in time. Might just She's get got something. There. She's got killed the it. Jack out. Who's got the tee? The jack has almost obstructed the, uh, the head next door. Oh, I think Australia might have the Bacchus Bowl here. They do. Yeah, hard to tell as you see the blue bowl on the line. You would favour that from here, but it just depends how much closer the red bowl is to us. The angles don't um, really suit where we are, but that's a very close one. For me, I'd be just favouring Australia, Val. I agree. I reckon that's Australia there. So now... It's up to Alan Ryan to at least possibly score one, or will they score a two? I dare say it'll probably come down to a measure. Alan on the forehand, little clap straight away. What does she think? Is it going to have the weight? Is it going to have the legs, or is it going to get around? It's a clear run as well. Oh, it's got the clear should run. Should be enough. Yep. That'll do. So it's at least one here to Australia, and it is the two. So Australia do take the lead early in this contest, something they didn't do until end 13 of that famous final in Birmingham last year. But on home soil, on greens that they play in, play on every year, multiple times. Absolutely sensational. Joey Wood watching my sister Amy in the UK. Come on, girls. Great to have your company wherever you're watching uh, Jamie Seymour, it is not fake grass. It is real. It's just been used for two straight weeks, so it's probably going to start to get a little bit of wear around that time. That's why the uh, the green keepers do like to change direction. So this morning we were bowling in an east-west direction, 
and the last two sessions of the day were bowling north-south. So it all changes throughout the day, but it is all real grass. There's a beautiful carpet next door, which hasn't been rolled on as of yet. That will not be far away. Chrissy, great start there. So electing to play what, what, what I would say is the narrow hand, which is interesting to see if Chrissy stays there all match. As we see, Sophie, well, she did this in the women's fours final. She stuck to the wide side all game. So did Chrissy, but Chrissy might have come in with a bit of a new plan here in the women's fours final. Definitely played the wide side. And maybe just thought, well, I might give this narrow hand a go in this direction. She's paired these up pretty well. That's great shooting, Christina. Now oh, right on the jack. So as we see there, two good shots from Christina. A little bit of a framed head. A bit of a target for the opposition. But Sophie's job now, as much as she wants shot, is just to try and get something past for her skip. See where they can build from some from there. See what Sophie Tolchard puts in. That's a good effort. Little clap from Amy Farrow. Yeah, well, Amy knows already that there's going to be weight played. There's no doubt about it. It's a uh, three, three and a half bowl target. It's quite wide. So at international level, plays this ability. It's a pretty wide target for them. So the fact that Sophie's achieve one of the main goals, and that is get past. Turn this over the jack. Well, Christine, that's stiff, really. Yeah, but it has found its way to a good home. Baz, I want to ask you the question about how... So you see Alan and Chrissy, they didn't play the first week together with um, Alan playing singles, Chrissy playing fours. But Sophie and Amy did play together in the fours. Does that change the dynamic a little bit for, for the two... Um, for the English pair because they have already played together this tournament? Does it help? Um, obviously, we know Alan and Chrissy have that relationship, but you know, they've already got that cohesive nature in the team. One was playing uh, lead, one was playing skip. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, well, they, they all know each other very well. We know that. Um, sometimes it can be a good way to refresh, so um, switch disciplines and, yeah, I guess keep things... Um, moving forward in terms of just excitement, playing with someone new and so on. But I think all in all, it's ideal that if you can try and s stay playing the same position throughout a tournament at this length, playing the same shots, playing, saying the same calls. So which Alan, um, you know, she's gone from singles now to skip three bowl, three bowl and two bowl. So her, her preparation leading to the pair has been great. She's been playing a lot of four bowls. And then Chrissy's been being able to go from lead to and stay lead. But as much as you want players to play well and you want them to get the job done, a lot of the times we focus on just the bowls performance themselves and we forget that wins can come from just players being there for, for each other when the times get tough. And, and that's where that chemistry and cohesion you speak about comes into play. So sometimes you're going to have some off games, off days, but... Ultimately, if you know the players get along really well and they're going to support each other through thick and thin, ultimately that's going to be a huge win moving forward. Well answered, Baz, and let's... Lovely shot from Amy. Three down to potentially one up. Yep. Well, it's close. Chrissy, I think, indicates one to Australia. Had one finger pointing up. So... Interesting start to this one. We're expecting a very close one. Alan just missing. So opportunity now for England to pop in. Yet another into the head and try and wrestle this shot back. The Aussies lead it 2-1. We're on the third end. We play 18, two-hour, 15-minute time limit, which we almost hit in the second session in what was an epic contest between Aaron Wilson and Tony Chung. 
Yeah, Amy, close here. Just doesn't want her bowl clean. She needs some jack movement. She might be getting her bowl clean, maybe onto the jack. Very well, risky shot. She got the jack on the rebound, and that has gone straight to the Australian bowls. Aussie's now holding three, but I reckon Amy Farrow, she might be going big at this, Barry. Yeah, she definitely has to go bigger with her last, but yeah, just a little bit stiff. If anything, to be you know to be really critical, probably a fraction heavy, but the merit was there because if she had have sat that nearest bowl of Australia or just trailed the jack, the head would have been lying much better. But they're the little gambles you take in a game of bowls. It's only early. Amy's trying to back herself in there. Just didn't quite come off on that occasion, but knowing Amy and her ability, she won't be far away with the next game, next shot. Two Aussies you using uh, Dreamline XGs, the Henselites, and Amy Farrow, Aero Optima, Sophie Tolchard, Drake's Pride, Conquest. Alan Ryan getting one around the back. Rockets in. That is a nice home. So let's see what the go is from Amy Farrow. There'd be a temptation to go big and maybe try and get rid of all those bowls. Definitely, Val. You are already three down, Amy, so there'd be a big weight. If she can somehow even just reduce, if she's a bowl high, doesn't get the jack, she might just take a couple out. Exactly. It's interesting to see which hand it's going to be on, so I'm just having a look here. It's going to be full hand. Gone for it. Big weight, Amy Farrow. Not far away here at all, Amy Farrow. She might get a couple out. She's done that. Oh, one, she's got one out. One out. So two to Australia. They take a 4-1 lead early in this contest. They raced away against Zimbabwe this morning. A 30-7 victory. To get their shot difference back up above 30. Had a bye in the second session. The Aussies leading it 4-1. So only a couple more days play left at Hallensvale. We'll be here on Friday. Broad Beach tomorrow. And then at Broad Beach on Saturday and Sunday for the final two days of finals. Of course, they are the final four disciplines to be decided. It's men's fours and women's pairs on Saturday. And then Sunday, women's triples and men's singles. Yeah, nice start from Chrissy again there. Backhand. Anything probably in these conditions around that yard's a good starter. Sophie Tolchard, was, this time yesterday, it was her brother on camera. It was, and Sam yesterday raced out to a 12 0 lead after four ends against Ulla Bakren of Sweden. It was an intriguing match because after that, Ulla actually outscored him. It was just one of those matches where Ulla just I enjoyed kept that fighting. Match, I really yeah, enjoyed I really it did. in the end. We thought that we were going to be done in 20 minutes, but in the end, it lasted well over an hour. and it lasted an extra 15 ends after that 12-0 12, yeah. 12 start. So Ulla Bakran made it, a, made it a real match. And it was like a cat with nine lives and just kept surviving and kept pushing and was down game on a plethora of occasions, but he came back. Yeah, it became a bit of a mental game for Sam. You know, he had to just try and stick tough and be patient and do all that stuff that singles players needs to do. And you know, Sammy was sort of looking over at us, smiling a couple of times and... We, uh, we knew what he was thinking. Um, I'm pretty sure he was keen to get it done a bit earlier, but they are the challenges that yep. these players face, and he got the job done. To be honest, I think Sam enjoyed it as well. Yeah, you know, it, was a, it was a challenge, and it was played in good spirit, and it was a fun match, that's for sure. I know a lot of people did enjoy it in the end. Sophie Tolchard putting one behind. So at the moment, Chrissy just leading the lead battle or winning the lead battle. But we know that against Sophie Tolchard, you're never going to have it your own way the entire time. Definitely not. 
both players. Uh, well, Sophie's been there for a good 10 years now. And Christina, well, she's trying to cement her spot there. And um, a big performance in this pairs is what she's after. Helen Ryan on the forehand here, looking to just slide inside that wing bowl of Sophie's. Australia has already seen Jake Felberg, Jackie Hudson and their directors Cody Felberg and Rob Hudson go home with gold medals. Jimmy Reynolds, Damian Delgado. And then, of course, the men's triples. Corey Wedlock, Aaron Sheriff and Carl Healy go home with gold. Every single Australian has earned a medal already at this World Bowls Championships. All the paras got one. Or got two, really. And, of course, the overall. The overall, so they got two. And then all of the Australian Open players will have left the World Bowls Championships with a medal, which is very impressive as they look for the Leonard and Taylor trophies. Alan Ryan jogs in after this one. Chrissy wants it to hold, and that, look at the turn. Australia yeah. holding three, I reckon. So, Alan, that's just respectful. Respect with her first bowl for Amy and getting that bowl to the tee. So that's just saying that Amy has good, got a good hit on her. She's thinking that Jack might get moved out of there eventually. But and it shows that she's a student of the game as well, understands the chess game and the tactics. Sophie Tolchard doesn't mind this too much. Well, that works, Val. One way of doing it. That is the boss. And now the good thing for Alan is that if she wants to, she can drive it at Baz has had a little bit of an issue with his mandarin. Too much pips. Too many pips in these mandarins. Oh, no. Who do I tell? How can I fix too many pips uh, in a mandarin? I don't think that's controllable, Val. Mother Nature, you might have to call her. But uh, just with that result there from Amy, look how important Alan's back bowl is all of a sudden. Yeah, she exactly. She's got the backest. And it's just come underneath. Not far away at all. So Amy Farrow with an opportunity to pop in a second and getting them back in this. She's such a dangerous skip. Always in the area. There's not much really on offer here. I think... Um England probably need to score, just take this one and then grab a length. I wouldn't be surprised if we see England play some short ends here. So both players having a good chat there, both English players. It's great to see. So they're probably just saying, listen, hang in there. We're going all right. But we need to just tighten up a little. Where do you think it's best to do that? We're going to go long. We're going to go short. Do we try something different? You know, Sophie Tolchard might jump on the forehand. Might jump on Christina's hand. Christina played a great end in this direction previously. So, Or Sophie might persist on the backhand, feeling that she'll find it. So we see the jack about five metres, four metres shorter than what it was in the last direction going this way. So let's see if she sticks to this backhand, Sophie. So Australia holding sway early in this contest, the rematch of what was one of the contests of the century so far anyway. So four, forehand it is, Val. So that's great leading smarts from Sophie Tolchard. And she's jumped on Christina's hand, and she's jumped on the jack. Now what does Christina do? It's a different line to what she was preparing. Just by a fraction. Amy Farrow chalks it. Baz just sitting bereft on his chair, wondering why there were so many pips in his mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it tastes good. But yeah, it's when you, you can deal with it if they taste good. So uh, Sophie, really sorry, Barry, just very 
very, very keen she would be to get in a second one here and take an advantage over Chrissy. And look at this, Barry Lester. And that's that chat. So you're only four ends into a game, five ends into a game, but Amy went down. She stayed down the head there and just had a little chat to Soph. Hey, Soph, what are you thinking? Let's talk lengths. Let's talk hands. Let's let's go. Let's go. You know, a good uh, leadership from a skip. And Sophie, she wasted a bowl on her backhand in this direction two ends ago. Short bowl out on the wing. And Christina had a great end. And Sophie said, well, maybe I'll just jump on Christina's hand. And it's working. So It is. They're the small wins. You're not necessarily always going to execute it, but you've got to try and put some kind of plan in place. This is a big end from Sophie Tolchard. She's really inserted herself into this contest, and she should be very pleased with it. If she can add another one and cover the jack trail, that is perfectly... And now all of a sudden she's changed hands. You're right, Barry. That is brilliant. Sophie Tolchard, absolutely magnificent. Look at that diagonal line of bowls. Monumental stuff. She's stalking this, Christina. She wants to disturb it. Can she kick the jack out? Well, I opened it up a fraction anyway. Sophie Tolchard wins the lead battle of N5. We play 18. We saw at the Com Games how important that lead battle was. Do you look at this change of hands from the 31-year-old? And it's so important to be able to do that on a dime and on a whim. Sensational from the Com Games champion and the world champion. So much bowling pedigree in that Tolchard family as we saw Sam yesterday, world champion of champions win the last year, Com Games. Yeah, what a family, what a talent. Is Sophie and Sam just... Strategic bowl from Amy there, just trying to put one in the area that the jack might end up two down in that area. So good smarts from Amy. Just noticing a couple of comments coming through here. Just make sure we all stay respectful here. We're a friendly bunch here at Ringside Live, and we like to keep it that way. So, Ellen Ryan just going to come underneath. She's got one more to come here. Sophie giving the instructions to Amy Farrow. Greens, they were running at 14.8 for the first game this morning. Now they're at 15, I reckon a good 15, maybe even a bit more. But they're running nicely, they're running quick. And Amy Farrow is tracking okay. But he's just going to run underneath. Barry's just gone to have a little feel of the grass. It's gone all Matt Rowell on me. Don't please don't start it. <laughs> don't start eating no, it. No. <laughs> I know you love bowls. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to be eating any grass, fell. Now, just seeing if I'm picking up any grass, just the tiniest little bit of grass clippings, but more so just to see if there's any surface moisture left in the in the greens from. The bit of rain we've had the last few days. and Yeah, it's been more in the morning and in the evening, haven't we? Yeah, so it's pretty dry out there, which means it just sets up for the green to just get quicker and quicker over these long days of play. And as we see there, right across the green, see beautiful colour, light, lightest of green tinge in the green, which means there's definitely a bit of uh, growth in the green, but majority of the time throughout the winter when they go a little bit dormant, we're lucky up here. The dry winters, but you can really pretty much don't have to cut the greens very often, and if you do, don't cut much off them. 
So Amy Ferro, she's on the forehand. Can she get back and add another one? Trying to get back round to where Sophie's back bowl is. Uh, Almost not a bad effort. That bowl of the Australians was just in the way, but if you look at this, the, they have set this end up perfectly here. And Sophie Tolchar's lead bowling, absolutely spot on. Off the back of a plan, Val. Yeah. So this wasn't winged. It wasn't hoped. It wasn't, oh, let's just uh, put the mat down, roll the jack anywhere and hope we play well. She but, said to Christina, I'm going to take your hand and I'm going to raise you. And that was off that back of that rink meeting. So you might find throughout games it's hard to actually get in front of your teammates and have a chat, especially if you are not uh, haven't got the first bowl. Um, on the crossover. So a little tip, I guess, would be, if you're skipping, chase your last bowl down and stay down there behind the head. And when uh, when, the, when the next end starts to, to start and they start kicking bowls, that's when you can stay down and have a bit of a chat with your teammates. So have a little mini meeting, just assess how things are going. And communication, that's been one of the key sort of factors in our commentary or the key messaging in our commentary you have to communicate clearly with your teammate. Doesn't matter if you're playing fours, triples, pairs. You just need to be yep simpatico, spot on. You don't want to go a full game and not having really had a good conversation with your teammates. You know, a little high five and that here and there is good, but you've got to stay really connected, keep up the talk, and um, yeah, it's no better way of doing it if you can just find some time to stop and really connect. Now, Chrissy's interested here. Oh, Alan, Alan needs, oh. might get a rock. Didn't. So this could be a triple for the English. Looks as though it is. And I believe that I didn't see Chrissy's signal, but I'm pretty sure that was that was three. So England retake the lead. 5-4. Interesting start to this match. Five ends played. Nine shots scored. 5-4 buffer in favour of Tolchard and Farrow as they look to get one back on this Australian pair that denied them the Commonwealth Games pair's title. Yeah, it's hard to believe it was more than a year ago, Val. It really yeah. is. It really is. It's just gone so quick. But here we are on this... On, I wouldn't say the second biggest stage, but arguably... Just as big, if not bigger. Bigger, more countries anyway, but Com Hard, Games. Maybe harder to win. Com Games for the players, you know, from a from a uh, commercial perspective is oh, phenomenal. Yeah. Like I I just remember Anna Mears, Patria Thomas. Um, Steve Monaghetti. They all turned up and sat there in the crowd and cheered on Australia and some Australian legends of, of swimming and cycling and, of course, marathon running, so... Big names in Australian sport, and they come to watch our, our bowlers, and that's the beauty of the Com Games, that cross-sport interaction with all the other athletes and our uh, actual village there last year. We were lucky to get to know the Rugby Sevens players and the wrestlers and everyone else. And, yep. and Val, you uh, got to rub shoulders with a lot of the uh, media personalities yes. and uh, media team from other sports. No, it was great um, in terms of networking and doing all that sort of stuff. Um yeah, there was uh, Xavier Cordia from cycling. That's um, right. Yep. There was Georgina and Millie from uh, from netball. Great to great to meet all those people and even some of the athletes as well. So Getting Christi to spend a lot more time with Barry Lester as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, Christina on the back end again, just ideally trying to spring the jack, but also you run the risk of um, not getting another one in there, but. Good track for Christina. Ideally, find another four or five feet. Get another one in there. Try and just tighten things up for Alan. Give her a chance, but Sophie will be looking to do the same. Here we go. She's chasing after this one. Doesn't want to probably fill that gap. Doesn't want to flop off the shot. Well, that's that's pretty good too. Yep. Good home. But yeah, that the village life at the Com Games was it was something different and something that I never thought I would ever experience in terms of either an Olympics or Com Games, but it, it was quite special and something that I'll, uh, I'll treasure for a very long time. No, you and Locke did a great job. 
It's great to see you there. At Lockie. Lockie's Corner at uh, Leamington yeah. Spa, where he did all his uh, it was good. his best work, his interviews. Hanging out with the squirrels. <laughs> squirrels everywhere at Leamington Spa. Five bowling greens mm. in, one, in one spot in a park. Yep. Amazing. What a facility. It was It was sensational. So that's a great shot from Christina, just closing up that gap a little, which makes it a little bit more easier for Alan to come down, turn the red bowl up onto the shot bowl, maybe just squeeze the jack out of there. As we see Sophie, no doubt, getting a water or refueling of some sort, maybe having a chat to her coach. Yeah, she's having a drink. So long days. These players are on their feet. I know a lot of these players are out walking of a morning. And stopping for some breakfast. And then jumping on their team bus. Getting to the venue nice and early. Having a stretch, warming up. So it's a long day. Then back to their rooms. Dinner, team meetings. Recovery. And by the time you probably have a shower, you've hit a wall and it's time for bed. So very long days. And these players in their training and prep and everyday life, always trying to look to get the best out of themselves. So come game day and event day, they can get the job done for their country. It is so important to stay hydrated and to keep the nutrition and baz you are right they are long days three sessions plus cool down recovery getting up in the morning making sure you're mentally physically prepped i don't know if they do as long a days as what we do baz <laughs> <laughs> now they are they're there for a reason it's because they're dedicated to the cause and i know chrissy is a bit of a fitness fanatic she loves it goes to the gym a lot Keeps herself in tip-top condition. Alan Ryan with Wade here. Looking to change this head up. Ideally get the jack out of there. Just to hold. She may get some sort of a result here, Alan Ryan. She is tight, but she couldn't rub off that front, and it's gone through the gap. She gave herself a chance. Oh, we saw a couple of those in the middle session with Tony Chunk where those sorts of bowls worked for him. She had it in the area there, did Alan Ryan. Doesn't really need to do much more with her last. Almost perfect there, Val. Just clipping the front. But as you see, three good seconds there. So England need to do one of two things. Protect that vulnerable bowl of theirs or get another one in there. So Amy Farrow has pretty much gone rinse and repeat. She's put a bowl in the exact same spot, I reckon, that, the, that her last one was, that Alan Ryan just cleared away. So let's see what the two-time Com Games champion can do. Already building a really nice audience here on Ringside Live. Great to have your company from wherever you're watching from around the world. I know it's very late in the evening in the UK, but I'm sure we've got a few people watching from Torquay or family members, friends, or just avid bowls fanatics. I've loved every second of this World Bowls Championships and being a part of it, seeing it for the first time in seven years. The last time this tournament was staged, Barry Lester, I was just graduating uni and was yet to sort of get that full-time employment, and now here we are. Well, Alan Ryan, the risk assessment's been done. Both players have had a good chat here. I'm expecting big weight now. Yes, big weight. Looking to kill this, Jack. Alan Ryan, she's not far away here. Not far away at all. But I reckon the Amy Farrow bowl has gone towards the tee. One down. They ran the risk. I was looking just to get the 
Well, that bowl went the wrong way of Amy Farrow because it could have been one to Australia on the tee there. Uh, I think one. it's at least two. Yep. Measuring for three. Oh, that's, they are measuring for three here. This could be a huge collect. Yeah, the plan the there, Val, was, sorry, the plan was just to get Jack, but also kick some of the Aussie bowls back, you know, just to try and you know, move them back. But unfortunately, they all stayed. I missed the signal there. Let's have a quick look. See if we can find out what that was. Pretty sure it was two. So we see they'll move. They'll change the board for us. We'll get a look at that. So as it, as it sits at the moment. But yeah, Alan Ryan there, good stroke. Nearly got the bowl clean. The jack only just moved, so she only feathered the jack with that weight. So nearly got the bowl clean, but none of the Aussie bowls sort of kicked back and and hung around. So. Good attempt, good good intent. And that's what you want to see all your players backing themselves in to go go for what they see. And we saw Sophie Tolchard smother the jack in this direction two ends ago. That's another another lovely start. Not one hundred percent sure what the score was, but we believe it was a what did you think, Baz? Two? Yeah, Sophie's just turning the board now. That was a three. There you go. Eight four in favour of England. They were down four one. Six shots or seven shots scored from the last three ends for Tolchard and Faro. Yeah, a fair like a fair bit uh, goes on in, in these games um, that probably aren't really noticed. And I, I really wanted to highlight that little team chat that Amy and Sophie had. Well, since then. It's been peaches and cream. Or scones. Whatever. Anything. Anything that's good. Because that's exactly what it's been for this English pair. So, Christina. That bowl just getting away. Good weight again. Handy weight. So, those bowls are fairly handy. As you see Sophie sticking to the forehand. Just trying to... Stick to that rhythm, just getting the bowl away the same, not having to put it in a hand differently. Forehand, backhand, just forehand, three deliveries on the forehand, nothing different, and that's where you can get that rhythm like that. And that's what she's found, Barry. Like the, it's been monumental. Ever since that chat, Chrissy was well and truly on top in that lead battle, and since then, Sophie has flipped the lead duel on its head. Because... Uh, Val, like some players will, will might swap and change all, all game, forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand. But the actual act of delivering a bowl on the forehand versus the backhand are two different things. So that's why in a perfect world, if you can try and play forehand all day or backhand all day, but that's nearly impossible to do. But there's no, there's no um, embarrassment or there's no qualms when it comes to if you have a favourite hand, a forehand or a backhand or whatever it may be, own, own it and do well at it. Try and get get uh, get going and getting your job done playing either the, just the forehand or the backhand. <laughs> and as we're seeing with uh, Sophie here, forehand in this direction in the last two times, she's had five bowls inside 18 inches. Been a great start so far. It's all Chard and Faro really opened the gate and again like they did in that Commonwealth Games final last year. They edge out to a bit of a lead. Will history repeat itself? And that's a good effort from Alan, just having that bowl go through the gap. So as the head sits at the moment, it's just still a dead draw. There's no real targets. <coughs> Amy Farrow. Very close. Not far away at all. That is going to be the boss, the best of them. I reckon 
Target now. Full weight Whoa. here. It did fall out, though. That doesn't help the target. Does it change Ellen Ryan's option? So that target is about five bowls wide now. But still, you've got to back yourself to either play one or the, one or the other. Dead draw like this. I'll tell you what, she's, I reckon she's dead drawn this, Ellen Ryan. She's gone close. Yeah, two feet short, right on line. But as we see now, Val, so picture that left bowl there of Ellen's, the last one. And then how many bowls can you fit between that last bowl of Allen's and the front right? So there's about six. It's about a six-bowl target now. So if any weight is played by Allen with her last down in that funnel, you'd expect the head to change r rapidly. So, Baz, check your watch. What time is it? Yeah, not far away. Well, she needs to be careful here, Amy. There's only one bad result. And has she got Whoa. it? She's followed it through, I think. Yep. But Lockie Williams pointing me to the watch, saying it's nearly four and it's saying that yeah. we've been alluding to this whole tournament a yard more after four. So Amy was just, she had to be careful then. She didn't want to tap that front bowl up of Allen's. She got around it, but then collected the jack. And she's hung on for one, and the head probably sits a little bit better for England, even though they're only holding one now. Yeah, but the target isn't really there, and if Helen can crash into all those, it's got a fair few bowls to get through before it actually gets to the jack. There's five bowls in the way there, and you'd have to hit it dead centre and hope for some luck. So, yeah, so true, I, so I, true. I can't see a weighted shot being used here. No, nah, Alan doesn't want her nearest bowl to pop out of that head. Not at all, because that creates a massive amount of danger. So Alan's just going to have to come around and try and... Draw it cold. Yep. Which isn't easy to do, because she's got obstructions in the way. she turn turn her nearest up under the front. Can it hold? She likes it. Clear the front, Alan. Well, not a bad effort. So one more to England. They win a fourth end on the bounce now. What I would like to see... With the Aussies maybe have a little chat just to discuss tactics. and Well, the only way they can, Val, is if Alan had have chased that last bowl down and then went and stayed down there. Yeah, and she kind of did, but then turned her back. Yeah, and because England have the first bowl, Alan can't call Christina in for a chat now. Mm. So, and then when they go to cross over, they can't have a chat because Amy's got first bowl. So... That's that's the the brink etiquette we've been playing within the rules. But if Alan wanted to, she could be down the other end now chatting with Christina just about what do you think, mate? You know, forehand, backhand, you know, what do you think about lengths and so on? So they're, they're the little insights to the game. And you watch, no doubt, over the next 10 ends of this match, Christina and Alan, they'll stop for a chat. They're going great. They're playing well. Really nothing in it other than that little multiple by England, the three shots a couple of ends ago. So there's not much in the game. It's yep. not panic stations, but they're just in keeping the encouragement up. And that's what I really do love. And I know I've spoken about it a lot with Alan Ryan, just her maturity out in the rink, the encouragement she's showing Chrissy, and the way they just continue to fight hard for one another. And it's, it's um, great to see, especially by these two young players, but even though young, very, very experienced. Is he just coming underneath? So ever since that chat, Sophie Tolchard has absolutely dominated this lead battle. She's been sensational. It was that one end to set up that first three. Brilliantly done. And look at this. Another one that's going to be close-ish. Goes to a good home. And it could come in handy later. Christina Christic. Her work cut out for it. It's not far away here, Chrissy. Alan Ryan doesn't mind it. And again, they're just continuing to run on here, these bowls. You think they're going to pull up, but it's that little bit of extra run. They've been, these greens have been. In the sun all day, the shadows will start to 
overtake a bit later and engulf this screen as they are in the top right of your screen right now. But Sophie Tolchard, absolutely brilliant. Led superbly in the women's fours final. Christina needs to get there now. Oh, it's a nice shot. Great shot, Christina. But again, look at how they keep running through here. You think they're going to pull up? Green speed at the moment, Baz. You reckon still around that 15? Yeah, 15, high 14s. Um, and, but, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised, like you are, Val. I'm, I just didn't expect that sharp turn coming into the, into the uh, headwind, but I'm just getting a sense that... Um, it's just a bit more protected as the jack gets deeper up the green. So Amy Farrow should be looking to just be confident on the draw here, try to trail the jack back, sit the shot bowl or second shot bowl of Sophie's. But if that can't be achieved, just know the fact that if you are slightly over, you get back to the tee. As you can see, Sophie, she'll encourage this, saying good area, good, good effort, bit of a hand gesture there. And Ryan, as one of Sophie Tolchard's bowls falls out. See it randomly move. That's, I think, the second time that's happened. Alan, let's see what she can do here. This is so important. They've lost four ends on the bounce here, including two triples. She's not far away, Alan Ryan. It needs to turn. Great she shot. sits the bowl and secures it. Brilliantly done from Alan Ryan. So Amy Farrow needs to tighten up here. Just got out on the high line and then drifted. And this one's drifting away as well. So a couple of missed opportunities there to just pack the head, get more in there. So you can see just missing high. Have a look at the replay here. She got her line perfectly there, did Alan Ryan. Yeah, got the ball well. Not quite sure if she hung around to count. That front left bowl... Of Sophie's, I feel, is there is third shot. Great shot from Alan Ryan. So looking to add in yet another one here and try and rectify this situation. They're down 9-4. That one again, gonna like Amy Farrows, going to hang out wide, but I think Alan Ryan might have just given Australia the tee. That's a yeah, huge part of this match. So she's no, she has not. So I, I would have thought, and, and once again, Val, how, how good is this? Up up the front of the green, doing their little risk assessment. What if the jack goes to the left? What if it goes to the right? Get both bowls, make one. What if we get the jack right back? Well, we only go one down potentially. If you kill it, you make two. So three or four options would have been covered, and now the shot's been made up. And then it's a case of just getting the job done now for Amy. So here we go. Big weight, looking for both bowls. Or oh, the jack. She wants both bowls. Amy Farrow. She's got one. Got one out. So nicely played from the English skip. Now let's see what Alan Ryan thinks. There's a world of room here to score and to just get on the board which is all the Aussies need at the moment just to get the map back and dictate the length. Amy Farrow comes and joins Sophie Tolchard on the bank at the head. And they'll watch Ellen Ryan as she sends down her final bowl of this eighth end. Of course, we're playing to 18 to our 15 minutes, the time limit on these sectional rounds. Of course, we'll play out the full allotment of ends because shots up matter. Really important. 
the Australians can get a result here for their own personal hopes of progressing. Allen wants this one to hold. It's trying to, but I'm not so sure. It's close. It falls. Chrissy claps it. Very close. Yeah, I think so. Has it done enough? High five, an elongated one at that. Sophie Tolchard says, no, 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 no. Let me measure this first. And I like that from Sophie. Straight in there. Wanting to make sure. One kicked out. 9-4, the English lead. Two kicked out. And that is a two to the Australians who desperately, desperately needed it. When they're scoring, they're scoring in twos. And it's 9-6 in favour of this English pair, Sophie Tolchard and Amy Farrow. Final match of the day today. We've seen Ellen and Chrissy defeat Zimbabwe this morning, 30-7. And we saw Aaron Wilson in an epic over Tony Chung. 21-19. Disco only led after four ends in that contest. There were 28 of them. Tony Chung led after 18. Six of the ends ended with the players uh, dead level. So Jack, almost on the tee there, Val. So definitely a new location. Five metres deeper than where it was last and in this direction. And the mat right up. So about, well, you're probably looking at about 25 metres of length. But Jack's in a new location. Just trying to change the way this thing, this head looks and the way the game's starting to shape. So Alan and Christina just putting that Jack in a whole new spot, hoping that it just changes the momentum of this match. So, 6-9 with the Australians. The Australians, they're trying to get themselves back in this contest. And it works. Beautifully done. Christina Christic, Jack up under the, un, under the grandstand there. Jack in a new location. Just didn't quite nail it the, her last few times playing this direction. She's come down and nailed it. And... Force the hand on Sophie. Sophie just missing under. So, well done from Christina and Ellen. They didn't just let the game play out on its own. They're trying to dictate terms themselves by putting the jack in a new location. Sometimes you have to. As a bit of cloud cover comes towards Club Helen's Vale. It's from the west here. Getting towards that four o'clock in the first week. As we saw it a little bit where the rain would be coming at four Around there, we'd get a little bit of an afternoon shower. Yeah, Hopefully very... nothing yeah, like that. No, um, very common, wasn't it? Just getting that afternoon cloud as Sophie Tolchard tries to draw this. Wow. That is brilliant from Sophie Tolchard. Well, 24 hours ago exactly, we saw Sam doing similar things. And his younger sister, she is on fire as well. She's taken this lead battle against Christina Christic by the scruff of the neck. So, back end it is for Christina Christic. Just give it a chance. Looking to try and trail the jack. Tuck it around the corner. Going to finish in a good home. Get around that bowl and it's perfect. Well, that's his uh, really good plan B. If you're not getting the shot, as we see Sophie now try and add a couple of feet and get to the danger area. Temperature cooling a little bit, Baz. You mentioned before it might be jacket weather. It's getting to that point here. so It's crossed my mind. Yeah, it may make the green... A little bit different. Might not hold out as much. Might might slow down. Who knows? Just depends on the wind. You are getting a bit nippy there, Baz. Yeah, it is. Shiver. Yeah, you can see the shadows starting to come across the green there. So see that big shadow moving its way over from the west. Well, that's 
The sun's getting in behind the trees now, and yeah, it is quite late, 10 to 4. Almost it's, getting to yard more territory. It is, it is. And you'll see the first sign you usually see when the green's starting to slow up a little, and uh, and like you say, the, the temperature's dropping, is how the bowls sit on the grass. You can just see the bowls, they'll just, it's like they're slowly sinking. Uh, they go from standing right up on the running surface to just sinking a little bit into the grass. That, ju- that just means the grass softening a little because the leaf is just starting to stand up. And, of course, as the leaf stands up, the speed of the green will, will, will go down. So just be wary of that. And there's a few ways to combat that as the green slows down. Ideally, probably sh- play, keep the ends end lengths short or shorter. Or just remember to, uh, in your technique, just to keep pushing forward with really good momentum. Keep, keep extending in your delivery and keep stepping with really good purpose. Alan Ryan on the charge after this. Looking for that jack. Needs to get down. That hand out there, not holding or not swinging back as much as towards us. The forehand for Alan Ryan out there, just not... Sorry, backhand, I should say. Yeah, good call, Val. Yeah, it's it's not quite as sharp as previous days because of the speed, but... Amy Farrow, she needs another one in there. She probably best to do it now. Well, not quite. So Australia, this door is wide open for Alan Ryan to come down on her backhand, trail this jack, four bowls waiting. That is the uh, opportunity that faces Alan Ryan. Just leaving the head. She knows what she has to do. Good speed, just bring it in a bowl. There is a big collect on offer here for Alan Ryan, a massive one. She can get it. Could flip the script yet again. And it's off the back of Christina Christick. It's with her lead prowess. Has Alan gone too high here? Probably probably quick, if anything, Val. That's for me. That line probably would have worked. As you see, she's probably just overdone it. And... Uh, not a, I wouldn't say a missed opportunity there for Alan because it wasn't an easy shot. But, no. but um, Alan, yeah, she'll be, she'll be thinking, wow, I, I would have loved to have played that shot, and and probably everyone would have loved to play that shot. It's one of those shots that, no, not many better feelings when you can trail that jack for a number. It's just a good feeling, but um, that's okay. There's Amy Farrow just trying to draw another. She needs to get down quickly. I think she has. Yeah, that's a great shot. So that probably gets in. If not, it's close. Taking one out. So that's the front red versus the other blue, the blue at three and six o'clock. So we'll see here. Front blue, sorry, front red. Indication there. Didn't quite see it. Very quick. So if you told chart. Yeah, I missed it. I was just watching the measure, so I think it was just the one in the end. So ten six in favour of the English pair. Who again at the halfway point. Like they did in the Commonwealth Games. They lead. They've won seven of the ten, uh, sorry, seven, six of the nine ends so far. How's my maths going? And more importantly for them, they've won five of the last six ends here. Farrow and Tolchar, this one's going to be well short. Line not terrible for Sophie, but I reckon she would have liked to have done a bit more. Now, Chrissy can jump on this. And uh, as we just approach four o'clock, Val, we uh, we also approach just over the half foot halfway mark, and plays as we see there, Chrissy and Sophie, as this is a twenty, probably a thirty meter length. 
have been stretched distance wise and been stretched with the conditions. So this green now just just starting to slow down. It's been a free running surface all day. And as you see here, nice correction from Sophie. Probably dropped maybe a half a second, which equates to around about three feet. Well, I'll tell you what, Baz. Three feet of run on. You mentioned the halfway mark. Well, the time limit, two hours, 15 minutes. Well, we're running at a, an hour and seven minutes so far. So we've just ticked over the halfway mark. Something to possibly keep an eye on. Yeah, and that's right. And, um, you know, the, the, the coaches, um, team management, they're, they're right across that. They'll be... Uh, just monitoring, as Chrissy just <laughs> shaves the back of that, Jack. Uh, they'll be just monitoring that, just saying, you know, not in the way of they should probably do anything different. Just give them a little tap of the watch. Just let them know, you know, halfway um, or, or, you know, half an hour to go, et cetera. Um, but the players, that, they'd be across it anyway. But also you can look at it another way that the clock will be what the clock is. You don't let the clock dictate how you play. Um and ultimately, hopefully, the clock doesn't come into play. But it is another area this match that in all their lead-up games, warm-up games, practice matches, and formats such as Trans-Tasmans and so others, that uh, the players um, are getting more and more accustomed to playing under time limit conditions. And, uh, you know, if I look back to when I first started playing the game, you know, time limits didn't exist um, and respots didn't exist either. So um, you could bash a head up, kill the end, and keep doing it all day long if you yep. wanted to. Um, Make for a real long game. But unfortunately, that's not conducive to television, and it's no. been a great in, in incentive to um, or initiative to create a bit of a time limit. It's uh, so common in most sports now, and uh, keeps players just moving at a good pace, and, uh, and the respot creates another element. And as you see... You've said the word a few times today, um, the word smarts and just uh, experience. Well, if the format is that you've got to play to a respot, well, it's the same for everyone. And you've got to be on the ball when it comes to making the right decisions when it matters. Yeah, you're exactly right, Baz. And that's where going to the tee is so important and so vital. If you feel as though your opponent and if you know that your opponent has that propensity to go hard at the head. You know, it's all about having those smarts, doing the planning, knowing who your opponents are. If you can get that information, still England holds sway here. Aaron Wilson currently leading Dan Salmon. If you want to have a look at the live scores, world2023.bowls.com.au as Amy Farrow. Like the Pharaohs back in the day, getting an applause as they stride by. Sophie Tolchard gives an applause. Very good setup here at the back of the rink to the English. Two bowls waiting. Australia have the two backest bowls, though. Sophie is going to get Amy to come up and have a look. And I like this just to make sure, remain calm. And number 10. And we sit with an hour and four minutes to go. Great to have your company wherever you're watching from around the world. This one set up. Precariously, Baz has gone to get the jacket. That's better. 
just because we're sitting in the in the shade. But it's nice in the sun. But if we're out there, I wouldn't probably just need it. But it's that southerly breeze that's keeping the air cool there, Val. Yeah. If it was a coming from the north, it'd be beautiful out there. But it's funny out here the other day. It was quite warm out in the sun on finals day on Saturday, and then sitting in the marquee or under the marquee with the wind breezing through, it was actually uh, it was actually quite cool. Jan Moore watching from Pakenham down in Victoria. It's a really important bowl here for Alan Ryan because look at the way that this head is set precariously. Now, England actually, you see the picture in picture there. Thank you, Locke. You see the picture in picture. England actually do have the backers bolt. A lot of people in the way as Alan Ryan goes with weight and Sophie Tolchard will keep it protected from us. Not sure what the result is. There's the result. Back on the tee. Australia, I think, have it covered. They're going to measure. What do you think, Baz? Yeah, great hit. Um, Australia really needed that. Big number down, three at least. So this could be one to Australia. Going to be close. One to the Aussies. Good hit from Alan Ryan. Yeah. Brilliantly done. And we tipped it. I said they'd have a chat soon, so here they go. be interesting to see what they come up with in terms of maybe some jack length or just a, a location for the mat. Just changing something up. Might be a change of hand even. Bill, Bill Tunstall, I'm an Aussie, and it looks like they are in trouble, I'm sorry to say. Well, Ooh, if you remember... Billy. No, he's, he's allowed to say that, no, but... I like it. No, but, it's good. But if you remember back to Birmingham last year... Well, they were in trouble, and they came back and won. It was a huge match. Our first heckler, Baz. Wow. Wow. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you haven't been here all game, mate. How's that, Baz? Well, we've, we've <laughs> sat here all game praising all the players. I know. And uh, talking about how well both teams have been performing as well as this game and the game in Birmingham last year and we've just got a bit of got a little bit of uh, trouble in the crowd I guess you'd like to put it um, but anyway we uh, will move on that's a that's a first for me Val yeah me too ah you get you get everything everyone's entitled to their opinion now oh, well and that's um, just on that though Val it's he's actually not even Interested in the game, he I know. said. So, anyway, we are interested in the game, yep. and we're interested and in everyone watching the game. So, we're sorry about that. We've got uh, a little bit of local. Um, oh, it's entertaining, isn't it? Reminds me of that guy at Happy Gilmore. Yeah, heckling happy as, as he was trying to play shots. Look at that from Sophie Tolchard. Yeah, nice shooting. Um, Christina just a little bit heavy there, but ideally, keep that line. Just adjust the weight. Well. Christina Christick, clear run. Well, that's a great shot from Christina. She needed it. One to Australia. Sensational from Chrissy. Let's see what Amy Farrow and Sophie Tolchard can reply with. Yeah, Sophie, beautiful line with the first two deliveries. Just needs to clear the front also. Uh, if she can. A good attempt. Just clipped in the front one. So the weight was probably good enough, Val. Just... Negotiating yeah. the front bolt. 
So we're just over halfway. Green yeah. speed now just starting to drop into, and you can see the, all the bowls in the shadows there too, Val. So that will have an effect on the speed also. As we see Australia holding one. And Alan Ryan, she's shaping up on the forehand here. I think she's just trying to clear that front bowl of Sophie Tolchard to see if she can get another one around it. Jack length, only 24 metres, quite a short length this. So a clear plan from Australia just to go short. Well, she might want to try and do it under now. Well, she's got a clear run. And that looks to be in the count. Christina Christic giving that a good clap. So it's a big target for Amy. You know, we've sung her praises so many times, especially in the Women's Falls final the other day and again today, yep. about how well she can hit. Such a great hitter is Amy. And we saw it in the Common Games final last year too. She's She's got a very good drive on it, does Amy Farrow. So I think she'll get into it with her first bowl here. Two down, big target. Try and get the job done with her first and then look to draw to the respot with the next two. And if she doesn't, I think it might be weight to the respot. If she misses, maybe you get something back. So it'll be playing on her mind that respot is so important. It really is. And as we, we've spoken a lot about smarts in that game of chess, she has gone big here, Amy Farrow. She's not far away. Sophie Tolchard doesn't mind it. She's in the area, but just sneaking through. Well, edge on the front then found the hole. So... What that does does for Amy now, because that front bowl is out of the way, it, it does bring back the draw. You know, maybe trying to trail it for two, or she, if she is going to play weight, she's probably got to play weight so that her bowl stays on and gets somewhere back near the tee. So this is sat precariously here. For Australia, they're down 10-7. England uh, playing a great match. Such an interesting matchup. All of our games this morning, even the Zimbabwe one, despite Australia winning at 30-7, to Jane Rigby and Karen Sinclair are in a lot of the heads. This one's going to come around the back. So a fairly short end here for the Aussies. And... Alan Ryan going back to cover the tee because Amy Farrow does have that propensity to run. Here we go again. I think it's big weight. Well, not too big. It's enough to disturb here. Well, she's not electing with the big weight here. Looking to play the touch shot. She wants it to go. Needs some so work off the front now, Val. Just going to drop under, or is it rolling through? She probably cut one out, if not got the shot. Interesting to see. Did a little bit of damage there as it rolled through. It took it ensured that that red bowl of Australia sitting at about 2 o'clock actually fell down. As she was in the area, they're going to have a look and see. This will determine what Alan Ryan does with her next. So they meet at the front of the head, which we see quite often. So it's just looking at both angles from behind and in the front. So you can see there, Christina Allen just assessing the situation. Still in a bit of a review of it all. What's best, forehand, backhand? Is there any danger anywhere? What if England does this? What if England does that? So yeah, really good assessment of things. Taking their time. And yep. as they do, we know we're conscious of it. And uh, and like I said, they don't really need to control what they can't control, and that is the time. But all they can do is try and play each shot on their merits and play it with as much thought and process as possible. So we're going to see here, Alan Ryan, just going to have a chat to the coach as well. So this, now we're on the 11th end. This is now where... Ideally, you want to be, if you're not in front, you want to start to try and kick away. Yep. And to... also, time is actually coming into it, Baz. We're at four or six. So, we've got 53 minutes left and we're in end 11 of 18. So, there's 
there's that's going to come into factor here. And of course, if the Huda goes before the final end has begun, that 18th end or whatever end we're on, that won't get played. So very interesting. So Alan on the back end, she's just going to put another one round here, ideally, just where that trail is. So, so do they believe they're holding? They one, believe they yeah. must be holding one here. So Alan is worried about the trail there for yep. two. So she's just trying to put a bowl there. So, so not bad. And if um, let's see what Amy Farrow can do because. A mega bowl here, and she can break this match right open. She's going to come on the forehand, Baz. Yeah, forehand, try and sit the, what we think is the shot bowl, just off 6 o'clock, and then if not, maybe try and trail the jack down the line. So yeah, Sophie Tolchard, to she's high line. interested, <laughs> wanting it to come back. It's trying, a big, just big effort. sneaking around. Not a bad effort at all. From Amy Farrow, but Australia for the second time this match. Win multiple ends in a row, and the margin cut down to two. Barry Lester. Well, we're getting an exciting one. We're getting a close one, which is exactly what we wanted after Birmingham. An amazing performance from the Aussies to win that. Just as equally amazing from England to save that last end at Leamington Spa. Send it to an extra end. All four of them... Played a great match that day, and all four of them playing pretty well so far. Yeah, as we see there, Christina again, Matt on the tee, Jack length, 25 metres, so very short length, just out of the shadows there. But you can see all the way up the green where the girls are standing. That's a long way away from the tee. And uh, short length is... Seems to be the, the, go, the game plan for Christina and Alan at this stage. So this one's going to fall short, but interesting, um, interesting, I guess, little situation all the players are in at the moment. They're playing the first half of the delivery is in the shadow, as we see there, and then the last sort of half to a quarter as the ball comes out of the shadow, it's back in the light, and that's where, at the moment, that bit of grass still has a bit of more run on it. So great shot from England. From uh, Sophie Tolchard, just two foot short. And uh, Christina, she just needs to find probably a yard of weight. Probably, well, it's looking to be on a really good line. Has she got the weight? Well, she's done enough. So both players testing themselves out yep. here in these conditions. It's never easy playing into the shadows. That's not because it also it, there's you know the vision aspect of it, trying to see the line and that's it right. Can change the conditions as well on half the green. You hear golf commentators talk about it all the time when the players are uh, putting over their shadow uh, about how tricky it is, and it's no different in bowls. Same with AFL, tennis, any sport really that involves a sort of shadow. Most sports really. Yeah, well, the section of the grass where the bowls travelling over now has been in the shadow for quite a while, so there's no doubt. That grass is not only cooler, but slower than the grass where the bowls are now because it's obviously warmer. So it's only going to be minute, maybe you know, maybe a quarter of a second difference, but it still is something to be mindful of. And whereas if you were doing the opposite, bringing the mat right up and trying to get it onto the edge of the shadow and then put the jack on the tee, you'd be nearly playing your whole length in the sunlight. As we see here, Sophie looking to find a couple of feet on her... Second delivery, and she's done that. Sophie Tolchard, that is going to do enough. That is brilliant. So England could be holding two here. It's hard to tell if the front one beats Christina's back one, but I think uh, the end winner hasn't been played yet. Yeah, well, it's a great bowl from Sophie, considering that they hadn't really been able to find it. And, you know, Chrissy's bowl sort of ended a bit wide. The line wasn't there, and Sophie got the weight right with her last and the line right with her first. So... She wins the lead battle yet again. So Jan Moore asking how long the game has. Well, I think we're running at about 38 and a bit or 38 minutes on the dot now, finishing at 5 p.m. local time. A 
Alan Ryan going underneath. So Sophie Tolchard has really found something this length that the Aussies haven't. Really impressive. Ever since that chat, Barry Lester, that they had after N3 when the Aussies took a 4 1 lead, she's been mighty. And I think the main key to come out of that, or well, main feature, was probably which hand to play. I think for me, I, I, I just felt that Sophie. Well, she took Chrissy's hand yeah, and, and she had said, to give that wide yep, hand away. Yep. Yep. And mm. she said, I'll do you one better. Amy Farrow now. What has she got? She can clear the front, but she can't, but. What a bad effort. Her weight was pretty good. And yeah, split those two bowls up for Australia out there. They're near the wing. So it's an um, interesting situation here. Ellen finds herself in. She's got to uh, try and dead draw this shot. Really back herself in. Out on a high line. Weight looks good enough. She's trying to get back, just not in time. So that's a good effort from Alan Ryan. And uh, this head... For me, I just don't feel like it's it's all done and dusted just yet. I think this is going to be something happen around the corner. Maybe some jack movement or just feel as though the actual winner for this end hasn't been played yet. So, oh, sorry, Amy Farrow trying to go a long way to deciding if the winner has been played. Well, not a bad Wasn't home. A bad effort and not a bad home. You're right, Baz. So... Yeah, well, that's that's plan B, I guess. Amy's got at least the back bowler. In case Alan was a bit quick with this one or looking to play some kind of conversion. But I think for me, Alan just takes the positives out of her weight with her last delivery and just brings her line in a fraction. As we see, sitting up there, oh, nice body language, chasing after it early. It's always a good sign. She needs to land something now. Well, it has been swinging in. If it can sit the bowl and stay in, there's a little high five, meaning wow. that the Aussies reckon they've got it. Oh, Alan Ryan, two down to potentially one up here. Great shot by her. Both teams, both countries having a good old crack here. This is game on. It is, and it is living up to the hype this match. Unfortunately, we may get timed out. Who knows? <laughs> This one's not going to get there for Amy Farrow. So the Australians, I think there'll be a measure here. One taken out. Now there's a possibility that it could be even more. Will we see a levelled match after 12 ends here? Just the one. Just one. So 9-10. Australia have won three ends on the bounce. England still holding on. What a match this is turning into. Yet again, both feeling each other out. Birmingham was a classic. The World Bowls Championships, while well, this one is turning into a sensational contest. A word that I like to use, phenomenal. And Aaron Wilson, well, it was a tough match against Tony Chung in the second session. Winning 21-19. Well, he's just beaten Dan Salmon 21-12, Barry Lester. That is huge. Yeah, and the, and the positives to come out of that, he's played on that bottom green this morning, come up to the top green, played in a different direction, different conditions, come away with a really hard-fought win against Tony Chong. And then he's gone back down to the bottom where he's played Daniel Salmon in the pairs the other day with Aaron Tees and come away with a little bit of a... A margin win there for Aaron. So that's it. Shoes are on. Uh, shoes are off. Thongs are on. <laughs> and um, time to go back and do some recovery for Aaron Wilson. So a really good hard fought win for him, and uh, in that middle game, and a, and a really good solid day for Aaron Wilson. And same session, same green that Dan Salmon beat Aaron Tees and Aaron Wilson on in the men's pairs last week, fifteen thirteen in that sectional match. Wales ended up going down in an extra end to Malaysia in the quarterfinals. Chrissy goes behind to a good home. Yeah, so these short ends starting to really pay off for the Aussies, even though England did hold a couple there, or at least one, and Chrissy sat it out. The uh, Aussies just seem to be appreciating the shorter lengths a four, bit more. Four of the last five ends have gone to the Australians, and the momentum now, well, they had that chat, Baz, and seemingly... 
a similar outcome to what England had. Yeah, that's right. And that's what it's got to be, Val. Um, you've got to have keep the communication up. Christina might see something that Alan might miss and vice versa, and, and that's the same with Amy and Sophie. So the more you're communicating, chatting on crossovers, the more you're chatting about the, uh, the elements to the game, the conditions, the more you can just keep backing each other up with the chat and informing each other on what you're seeing. And it could be the difference. Communication is key especially in a game like bowls when you're trying to get close to something 35 metres away from you and you've got a skipper standing right above your target. So you've got to back in their calls and back in their judgments and keep that positive mindset as you're doing it. As we see Christina Christic on the forehand here, one over, one under. Is this the one in the middle she's looking for? Is this the one? Just pulling up. So Trav Nortia. He's, uh, he's back up, he's watching, he's gone to bed in one of our sessions and he's back up watching. Unfortunately, we can't see the uh, Zimbabwe versus Hong Kong China scores, but if you go to world2023.com, dot, oh, world2023.bowls.com.au, it's a very long URL, but you can check out all the live scores there. So currently, Sophie Tolchard, what a lead battle this has been. It's been pulsating. Speaking of pulsating, Barry Lester, part of the Melbourne Pulse in the Bowls Premier League. Be coming up later on uh, later on this year in November. You, Alan Ryan, Gary Kelly, and Jeremy Henry at the helm. Yeah, looking forward to that. Mighty club, Pine Rivers. What a host club. What a venue. Yeah, Week-long event. Just can't wait. Love the BPL as Alan Ryan picks up the jack. Got it. Has it gone towards Sophie's or Alan's? I'm not so sure. Yeah, so... Good bowl either way. Christina indicating one down, so it's one to England. Amy Farrow, well, she's outnumbered. She's only got the one in there. Australia with the two. She'll be trying to get another one in there. A play of her ability. Three goes at it. She won't be far away here. Had the joy of watching Amy... Up close and personal in 2006 at the Commonwealth Games. When I first saw Amy play and a uh, very impressive player. And been at it on and on ever since. And her resume does speak for itself. A oh, beautiful weight there, just missing height. So one more to come for each here. Oh, two more, sorry. If I can get my maths right. This is why I do this, Barry, and why I was never good at maths at school. I and even now it's coming and tripping me up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind maths, to be fair, but I can't say I we really need to use much maths these days. But uh, Alan oh. Ryan missing high. Well, good attempt to try and sit the bolt. Really good weight control. It's a good home, but this, this is big for Amy Farrow. Absolutely, Val. Needs another one in there. As you can see, that bowl of Sophie Tolchard standing up. All alone in there with Australia having two seconds. I think she's going to miss high here unless the weight control is good enough to get back. Well, I thought she would have corrected there, Amy. She's a bit of a swing of the arm. Not happy with that. Well, we know what Alan's capable of. If Alan wants to get Australia back in front here, try and get into a really commanding position as time starts to run out. I can't see this game being completed, Val. No, there's about a uh, believe around. Uh, there's under 40 minutes to go, maybe 40 on the dot. So forehand it is, six feet, eight feet away, looking for this shot bowl of England. Alan Ryan, she's asking it to hold. Well, she needs the jack now. She might get something. Does she sit her own or she knocks her own away? Great attempt. Yep. Not far away, but look at that little catchment there. This is going to have to be a cold draw for Amy Farrow, seeing if she can add in a second here. Okay, Amy looking to put another one in there. 18 inches of room to count. Just needs to be careful with jack movement. Well, she's heavy. Well, still. It was a good effort. 
still favour England there. Yeah. She'll be very disappointed if she's yeah. given it away. I think she has. Wow. Too much weight. I thought that might have been an all right effort, but that's a disaster scenario for Amy Farrow. And Australia win a fourth end in a row, a fourth single in a row. And after 13, Barry Lester, with five to play. Oh, wow. She'd be very all. disappointed. Yeah, Val. From a, just a momentum perspective. Yeah. Yeah, could have nearly not played that last bowl. Just grab the grab the one, grab the length. Um, I know that if they had won that length, it would have been a definitely a big change up when it comes to to the ditch length. As we see, Sophie just chatting to one of the officials there, looking at her watch. Yeah, she's uh, she's um, well. Sophie's just sort of indicating there that she sees the Aussies just having another chat, maybe um. Now, this is just as tense as what the Commonwealth Games final was last year. It's been a great contest. Again, it's living up to the hype. We were, you know, when you, the Anthony Hudson call, who would have thought the sequel, sequel would be just as good as the original? Well, this one, this has been a great contest. Again, we're going to have the drama of the time. Christina Christie on the backhand, heading into the north direction. Got her weight right. Yeah, just slightly under. Good open up. Paul Michael Maynard watching on. Great to watch this replay of the Com Games final last year. He was at Leamington to see it. Oh, one of the lucky ones, Paul. We'll join you there. It was one of the more pulsating sporting matches that you'll see. It was so close and the comeback was unreal. This one, England led 9-4 and Australia have come back yet again. 10 apiece. Sophie Tolchard gets her line right. Yeah, yard short there from Sophie as we're seeing all bowls now for this particular length in the full shadow of the green. So the shadow has pretty much consumed half of this green now and all the teams out on this green bar one rink are playing in the shadow. So they'll be just having to adjust now over the last sort of half an hour to 40 minutes, as you said. Not long left now in this match. Getting into that last sort of quarter of the match in, time, in terms of time. And players need to be mindful of the conditions. Just slowing up a touch here. You can see the bowl sitting down. Lovely correction from Sophie. Uh, it's in behind. Nice. So, Christina Christick, back to the first weight. So, let's see what she can do. Alan Ryan's got her foot down there. But this one, definitely not going to... I don't think this one's going to get finished here, Barry. Sitting at, I think... What, 35 minutes or so? Chasing after it, Christina. We don't have an exact time, but a good indication, so we don't know. We're just going off based on session times as little Summer has some burger rings, Aaron Wilson's little daughter. <laughs> She's loving life out here at the World Bowls Championships. Doesn't matter how old you are. Everyone's loving it up here on the Gold Coast, except for maybe one man in the crowd. Well, Sophie's played a good shot there. Turned the front bowl up. Made two now. Bit of a jack-high target situation for, for England, but as we see there, the clock. Thank you, Lockie. Now, this, is just, this isn't an exact time, Barry. This is just what we think. It's an indication... When we see Paul Holschke looming ominously, that's when uh, that's when we'll uh, start to worry that we're going to go out with the time limit here. So Alan Ryan just trying to play it neat with her first. If she doesn't quite get it done here, she'll look to play bigger weight with her last. Or she's not second. far away. Barry Lester needed oh. to get in, and that's well. 
that bowl of Sophie's. Is it moving? Still think it's one to Australia. That's oh, close. Might be. That is very close. And if we look to the side, that bowl has fallen in now. So I reckon, I wonder if it's one to England with that fall of Sophie Tolchard's bowl. What a contest. Yeah, great little head of bowls here. Amy Farrow on the forehand, looking to trail the jack back for three. Here it comes, starting to work its way back. Well, it's a good look with her first. Probably just a fraction heavy for what she wanted, but you can see that bowl clearly get back easily with that wide drawing side. Well, the original was good in Birmingham last year. The sequel is matching Ellen Ryan rising to the occasion. And she's ridden it off. And, well, that's two now for the Aussies. She yeah, a little a slide off the front there. Wide, a little bit fortunate, yeah. but, but in the area. She will take it, but Amy Farrow now. What can she do? Can she... Does she go big and try and clear those two bowls out? I think so. England have the back bowl. They've got the tee. Straight at the front one for me, Val. Maybe do that. She's close. Not far. Sophie's... She's played it. Yep. She's played it perfect, has Amy Farrow. That's a great shot. But has Australia's bowl stayed in bounds, Barry? I think it has. Yeah, and I reckon Australia... Shot. That is very close. But England, they have the tee. Yeah, what so a shot from Amy Farrow. Two down, one ball target. Massive conversion for England. Two down to one up. And Alan now, well, she's just got to find a way in there now. Forehand or backhand. I think it'll be forehand. Open Plenty side. Of room. Yep. Hasn't been too many forehand deliveries played for Alan in this direction. And she's gone from where the jack was, way up the front now, to extending, trying to add that extra weight. She's chasing it. How good is this going to be? Oh, that's a good open up. That's enough a shot. So Amy Farrow, as you can see, yeah. her bow up the front there. Well, that line's good enough for, for shot. She has to revisit the line she took there, maybe add a fraction and just play something again. But, well, they are looking at the bowl, which suggests they may have two seconds. That's interesting, Val. They just had a good study of that head together before Amy went up there. So you can see this bowl here, that shot bowl of Alan Ryan's. The way they stared at that head then suggested to me that they might look at that and have two seconds. Yeah. If well, not, because there's that wide bowl draw. over there. But so for me, it's a forehand yeah. draw. But I was just having a bit of a look at it. So yep, forehand draw. So Set it out. They've lost four ends in a row. England. Sophie Tolshard just standing in our way. So we're not going to get too much of an idea. She needs to clear the front. Needs to hurry now. And has she got it, Amy Farrow? I'm not so sure. Don't think so. This match has had everything in Australia looking for a sixth of seven ends here. But Amy Farrow might have drawn it. I'm not sure. We're getting a measure. Very, very close. About 28 minutes to go. We may get timed out. I'm not sure. Sophie Tolchard now helping with the measure. This is so close. Are we going to get an umpire? It's one to Australia. So the Aussies, for the first time since N4, take the lead. They've won five ends on the bounce, five singles. And the sequel to what was one of the best matches you'll see in Birmingham last year is living up to the hype. Under 28 minutes left to get four ends done. We might get there. They've started motoring through them. 
Ellen Ryan and Christina Christick back in front. In Birmingham last year, they didn't hit the lead for the first time until N13. Well, they're back in front after 14. The patterns are eerily similar. This has been a pleasure to bring this to you. And Christina Christick has found it. This has been such an enthralling contest. The whole day has been enthralling. The second session with Aaron Wilson, Harry Lester, and what he was able to do against Tony Chung. What a sensational performance that was. And this one now... Christic and Ryan against Pharaoh and Tolchard yet again, proving to be a bumper affair, as Kevin Bartlett would say, a killer dilla. The old killer dilla. I haven't heard that for a while, but yeah, as we look at the clock, we've got to try and fit in five ends. Obviously, we're on N14. Uh, N15 now. N15 now, sorry. So we've got yep. to try and fit in four ends in 25 minutes. It's going to be borderline for me. But the green speed has slowed down. The players are wary of that. You can see they're trying to give every bowl a chance here. They know. You can see the bowl sitting right down. There is another twist in this tail, possibly. I think the time should be all right. 25 to go. They've actually motored through the last few ends. I think they've kind of realised what the time is, but... I think this they is, might have got a little little chat from yeah, one of the ITOs there, Val. A little bit of a push, maybe, is Christina Christic. Her two lead bowls have been great. What's her third got? And the front end pressure, again, from Christina Christic. Fantastic. But now Amy Farrow and Sophie Tolchard, they might see that and go, you know what, we're going to have a shot. Well, the, the key to this shot here for me, Val, is... Well, I'm just trying to hear that call. I think the key to this call here is if you are playing weight, I think Sophie has to try and play to the tee. But if she's getting right into this, it's big weight. She's high, doesn't want to touch any of her own bowls. Or well, she's missed. Just not far away. So she was going to go for the big hit there. Sophie Tolchard, she doesn't get it. But time for Amy Farrow and Ellen Ryan to have their say on this, the 15th end. Christina Christick has led beautifully, but I dare say that Amy Farrow is going to have another ping at this. So does Alan Ryan try and cover the tee early, Barry Lester? Well, if Alan Ryan puts one pretty much within a foot, 18 inches to the tee here, that pretty much would stop Amy from driving flat out. So decisions, decisions. I can't, I can't really picture this head being hit with a lot of weight and the jack not moving. So that tells me there's a high percentage of the jack moving, which means it would kill. And I think if Alan puts one right on the tee here, there's there's drawing to the tee and there's drawing right on the tee and there's a big difference. I think if Alan's going back, she wants to get right on the tee. If not, she, if she puts another one in there, she just has to try and hide it, not make it any wider. So, well, she's going with the blocker, I think. Yeah, she's gone with the, which we don't see very often, but she's gone with the blocker, just missing high. So it's an interesting call. Well, it's one or the other. You've got to, yeah. you've got to cover that danger up the front. So blocker. So if she was about two foot across, or get to the tee, and she went with the blocker. So Amy Farrow, does she go for the big drive? She has the propensity to do it. And she has gone with weight. Very She's close. Much closer than the last effort by the English. Wow. And that is a great result from Amy Farrow. Sat one out, followed it through with the jack, and then knocked it right into the welcoming arms of those two Sophie Tolchard bowls. Potentially three up. Three down to potentially three up. Massive, massive turnover. For Amy Farrow, as we see this bowl coming in from Alan Ryan, just pulling up short. So 
I don't know about you, Val, but I'm not trying to make excuses for Alan at all, but can you feel that breeze into our face? Yeah, a little bit. It, yep. is, it is starting to come. It's, I think it's, just, what, a bit of a westerly? Yeah, just moving around from the west. And uh, as we see the, the flags and the teardrops still blowing around, so it's interesting to see how Amy copes with this breeze as well. Looks pretty good. Just needs to hold. Well, she's played it well. So drive, draw, great shots from Amy Farrow. And she's kicked that onto the jack to make it four. Well, now the pressure is on. This is arguably the biggest bowl of the match now. So Alan, England holding four. Yeah, Alan Ryan, this is all about area bowling now, Val. This is about spotting an area 18 inches, a foot to 18 inches wide of the jack. Try and cut it down. If you happen to be spot on, you'll take it. But ideally, just try and draw to the area and cut this back. Yep. And if you drop a two, even maybe a three would be a good result here. So she needs to hurry, Alan Ryan. I think she's I think she's going to get there. Maybe. No, he's going to drop short, Barry. So here's an opportunity. This is huge for Amy Farrow. She set this end up to perfection with her opening weighted shot. Sophie Tolchard just missed, but Amy Farrow to ensure at least a four and possibly break this match open for England. It's coming. Is it going to go too far? Needs to turn while well, Sophie's clapping it in. Nah, that's, that's going to be in the count. This could be five. Sure is, Val. That is mega. Yeah, I didn't see that coming out of nowhere. Christina Christick played some great lead bowls. And Amy Farrow and Sophie Tolchard, well, they're having their second meeting for the match. Just just to uh, go over the, how they're feeling. What they, if, if, Was that their first win in how many ends? That was their... Australia had won five ends in a row and six of the last seven before that. But the thing was... That only conceded singles, England. They mm. constantly had things in the head, and this is where... So they got those five singles back in one end, so it goes to show. Yep. Some, that, sometimes you just don't expect it to come out of nowhere. What are we going to see lengthwise? So middle, middle pretty much. Jack up a little bit, and the jack in the middle. So 28 metres of length, definitely longer. That 10-6 buffer that Australia came back from, well, that has been rectified by the English pair... This match has had a bit of everything. We said there was going to be another twist in this tail. Do Australia have another twist in them? Well, just had a chance to catch our breaths and reassess this situation now. England, four up. And all set up by Christina on her backhand. She wants to try and get back on as early as she can. Both leads have had a great battle, haven't they, Val? It's been, and that's been the tail of the tape, really. I think you look at what the lead battle has been doing, and Chrissy really started to win that battle again from end eight onwards. And that's where Australia came back. But early on, it was all Sophie Tolchard when England broke out to that lead. And Sophie is going to be underneath here. How is her weight, though? Not bad, not, not bad. too bad. Just a bit of correction on line and weight. Yeah, foot short. Mm -hmm. But uh, full credit to the green keepers. We've, we've said it all week, how, uh, how good these greens are running. But how they're drawing, even though you can see this green clearly slowing up, uh, the, how good they're, they're drawing across the head. Well, the green engulfed completely by shadows. Now, Christina Christick, has she got enough on this? It's an interesting one. I'm not sure, but as Barry Lester likes to say, the winner of this end has not been played yet. Amy Farrow with a brilliant drive. Didn't go too hard at it. Ensured that it was enough to just obstruct as Sophie Tolchard does enough. That is sensational leading, and both of them have been... On song today. England undefeated so far in this section. Christina Christick. Working wonders. 
What a match this is. So Australia's sitting currently second in the group here. Should they lose, Malta's Rebecca and Connie Rickson might have an opportunity to jump them based on that draw that they had with Zimbabwe yesterday. They're currently in action against the Netherlands, so the Netherlands could jump the Australians as well, which is dangerous signs. Australia, I think, would be hoping that the Netherlands get the job done over Malta with the Dutch still to face the English as Amy Farrow just on the outside. This is turning into a pivotal end. This end 16, Barry Lester. Yeah, Amy Farrow. Well, she hasn't got shot out of that, but she's managed to get the tee. And as we get towards the later stages, this matches. Alan Ryan. It's these bowls that are back behind the head come into play so often. I think Amy Farrow here. Well, she is sticking to the backhand. I think she was just maybe trying to draw it, but fractionally overweight. As we see here, she'll just try and build the head here, slide in under the wide bowl of Sophie's. Definitely back the weight off. Needs to hurry. Oh, don't think it's going to make it. So just a yard short there. So if Australia, well, a multiple, I think, is the best scenario now. Need to get on the board with more than one if they can. Alan Ryan will have last bowl. If she can pop in another one here, then it puts the pressure right back on Amy Farrow. Christina Christick wants this to hold, and it won't. So Sophie Tolchard will send her instructions towards her skip. As Isaac Morn just, he's completely just shown you up there, Barry Lester. Oh, I know wait, this what? is a pivotal moment of the match, but. Yeah, you want me to flip it and turn all the power off here? Baz. No, that'd be great. Baz couldn't figure out how to work the light switch, and Isaac has just come and hey, I used to sorted work with it out. Wolski. Instructions aren't his hot drinks. Oh. <laughs> All right. So the lights are on. Anyway, I uh, just trying to look after the players out there. Just getting a bit dark under the shadows. So the lights are on. And is Amy Farrow on with this weighted shot? She's close here. Bowl clean. Well, she's got bowl clean. Then the jack. Oh, my word. She's made four out of this, Barry. Maybe even five. No, there is a bowl back there just out of the screen where Christina is. So... So. I'm not sure. I, I think she's made a decent decent collect here. But Amy she... Farrow, Alan Ryan just simply has to has to get this or at least cut it down. If she can draw the shot, then even better. But that is another sensational bowl from Amy Farrow as Alan Ryan needs it to run and stop, and she's got it. Alan Ryan with a pressure bowl because that was almost game, set, and match, Barry Lester. Yeah, definitely. It was hard to read Christina's body language. Everything happened so quickly there, but Alan Ryan, no mucking around. She knew. Plenty of room. Under the well-lit green here at Green 3 at Broad Beach. Uh, sorry, Club Helensville. The lights are on, and, are, and so are these players. They know it's bowl for bowl now. Only three the diff. With a couple of ends to play and 13 minutes. Will we get this game in, Val? I hope so. This is end 17, so two ends to go. My We've got problems. plenty of time. Up and back, definitely. Should be sweet. Should be plenty sweet. of time. We've just got to get this end finished and then we get there. Okay, three the diff. Up and back we go. Well, again, Tolchard and Farrow, Christick and Ryan, what a match this has been. England, will they get their revenge? So 
So Sophie Tolchar just bumping into Christina's front one there, but still a lot of room for both players. So conditions slowly calming off. They usually do as the sun sets here on the Gold Coast. You'll find so most mornings and evenings quite calm. As Chrissy crashes on the front as well. It's a popular bowl, that one. Yep, crashing on the front, but Australia with two. The margin is at three. Could you imagine we get a tie, Barry Lester? I actually could imagine it. Probably. It would be so fitting if we did, considering yeah. after 18 ends in Birmingham, it was 18 apiece as Sophie Tolchard crashes into Chrissy's bowl but opens things up a little bit. So Australia still holds sway. 15-12, two ends to play, including this one, England, trying to keep their undefeated record alive. Yeah, so true, Val. You know, all players, you know, when they're playing the top of their game and they're such credentialed and, um, you know, highly professional players as we see as these four, yeah, ideally, you know, when when it gets down to this stage, unless someone really comes through, well, that's a great shot from Chrissy. comes through with the goods. Superb leading from Chrissy. She's won the battle so far, but Sophie Tolchard with one more to come. You know, very rarely will you see a draw, but in this particular format, under these conditions, there can be a draw as opposed to the final. So. And a draw for Australia, not a bad scenario. Sophie Tolchart looking for the gap. She looks very good here. Well, Amy Farrow just disguising it a little bit. She's got it, but has rolled just that little bit too far. So Wow. England find themselves a couple down. Toucher there. So the backest bowl favours England. And there's definitely going to be some aggression from Amy. So... Yep. Alan and Ryan should be all over that. I think backhand for me, coming down, sit that last bowl of Sophie Tolchard's, turn the red bowl in, and if she misses everything, she'll pick up the tee. So backhand it is. Jack, Jack length, 25 metres. Uh, bowlers, this is your 10-minute warning, 10-minute warning. Thank you, bowlers, 10 minutes. If you didn't hear, that is 10 minutes, Val. Yep. Uh, Paul said it a few times. Okay, so Helen Ryan's got a bit of an edge there and a bit of a run-up. And what yep. that's done is it's closed things up a little bit. But I think for Amy Farrow, I think it's big weight here. You can try and play a touch draw here all day long. But I think if she goes big weight here, opens the head up, gets the jack back, they do have last bowl and the tee. I just don't think it's... An easy shot to draw this. Maybe three goes at it, but knowing what Amy's capable of, such a great conversion player, beautiful weighted player. The bowling world, Baz again, waits with bated breath on this contest. So, looks as though maybe forehand in weighted. So, Australia, a multiple is exactly what they need. They're down by three. They're just going to have to continue to convert Body language, so you see her Amy square to the target, standing tall. Big weight. Looking for the jack. Any jack movement. Amy, she's underneath, I think. What's she going to collect on? She's got their own back bowl out. And touch her in the ditch. Yes. And the two backest bowls. So Amy's bowl stayed on. So as it sits, England are four down, but they have a touch her in the ditch and they have the tee. So what does Alan Ryan do here? Does she go for the? Does she try and get one back, or does she just pop in another one? Well, she's chatting to the coach, and as we know, there's only eight minutes left, and well, she's back out on the green now. So, yep, T it is, Christina, standing the, right at the back. Yeah, big shot here, Alan. She would have practiced this shot and played this shot so many times. Big difference between getting close to the tee and really nailing the tee. Let's see how she goes. Backhand. 36 metres of length from tee to tee right now. Weight looks good. Needs to hold. Okay, so Amy Farrow, four down. And Alan Ryan, I reckon, let's have a look. That might be enough, I think, for the tee. It'll be close. So now it's up to Amy Farrow. Staring down this one, Val. It still comes back to personal preference, and I feel, I think it's Jack for me again. 
She's thinking. Well, Gives the signal of four. I reckon she's standing pretty square yet again, Barry. Yeah. So I think this might be big weight. Backhand. She's going to try and draw out of trouble here. Yep. Looks to be on a high line. Needs to get down in a hurry if she's any chance. Now swooping, but not enough, I don't think. That's going to go around the back. But, again, if she wants to trail things, where does Alan Ryan go? Does she join her back there or does she put in a fifth? Maybe count and cover. Yeah, I, I expected weight again there from Amy. Um, just she wasn't too far away with her first, but now she's in a position where She'll probably be three or four down at least with this one. And she'll have to probably draw herself out of trouble. I think it's too late to play weight now. The plant the plant was there to try and get the jack or just clean a few out. They even create an easy shot with her next. But all of a sudden, Alan Ryan, six minutes on the clock. So we will get the last end in. Yep, we just have to have rolled the jack on the last end. Backhand, looking to get another one in there. Alan Ryan, remembering last time in this direction, they dropped a five. Now, can they pick up a five? Clear run now, needs to stay away from that front blue one. Oh, Alan Ryan doesn't want to rock that up. Well, I don't it's think... Probably cut the count down. I think it was already three. I think it's still three, Val. So, but that's opened the head up slightly, as you can see there. Amy Farrow drives forehand and removes the jack. She drops one on the tee. If she's tight forehand, she can clean potentially a few out. So, or, because her line was good with her previous delivery, does she just take the weight off and try and draw it? Currently two or three. It would be so fitting yet again if this match somehow ended up in a draw, but a three would make it a one-end shootout, which would just be so fitting considering what we had Last year, there's so many fitting scenarios for this match, but it's been fantastic. Amy Farrow, yet again, on the draw. Backhand it is. Now, she's on a, she's on a slightly tighter line to last time. She's close here, Val. Sophie Tolshard does not mind it. It's coming. Wow. Eventually, and Amy Farrow has drawn it. That is massive. England... Go a long way to deciding who wins this match. And Australia held sway for most of it what a in great, that end. Yeah, but, what a wow. great end. That had everything, Val. Aussies packing their head full of really effective draw shots, trying to strategic, strategically shut England out. And Amy Farrow, Farrow with her last, found a way. She had to take the, all that weight off from her second attempt. And anyway, we're still game on here. Have a look at the line. It was slightly tighter. The weight was better than her last. And look at how it finished. And a big celebration from both of them. They know how vital that is to their hopes of getting through. And a win here could almost book their spot in the quarterfinals, England. And Australia might be in a bit of strife. Amy Farrow, what a star. Yeah, it's one of those bowls. There was still plenty of other options, but it comes down to your personal preference. And we've touched on it a few times over the last sort of week or so, Val, is that you've got to gain confidence out of your delivery one way or another. So the second delivery for Amy, it was right on course, out on a high line. She just had to take the weight off and back it to come back, and she did that. But Christina Christic, beautiful lead bowls, set up Alan really nice. Can she do it again? Just get them up in around jack high or beyond. So she, her first objective here is to pass the jack, and that's a big box ticked. So right now, Australia chasing a four to draw, five to win, and Christina Christic knows the plan here, must reach with every bowl, and just try and set up a multiple. And Sophie, she knows what Aussies will be up to here. She needs to reach also. That big five on N15 that Australia coughed up, proving to be the decisive end here. England down 11-10 and the twist in the tail that saw Farrow and Tolchard. Take a big 15-11 lead. Australia pulled down a one after that to get within three and then the last end, well, the English skip. What a bowl it was.
So just a movement on the bank there. So as we see Chrissy reset, great might to see. Might as well now we get this last end in. Time does not come into it. Yeah, so all the other games are finished on this green. And just a movement on the bank. Chrissy just resetting. She's got a job to do here, Chrissy, and that's get three bowls past the jack. And if she doesn't reach, try and at least get something around that jack eye area. So she's done pretty well there. So Sophie Tolchard holding shot. Chrissy with two seconds. And Sophie now, she can attack this jack because her job now is just to get something a foot or two behind. So just be a player with a confident draw. Add the weight on her last same line. Malta leading Hong Kong China, or defeated Hong Kong China in their match. So the Maltese, was, sorry, I think it was might have been the Netherlands. I'll double check the live score. So Malta defeated the Netherlands. So Malta now move into second spot in this group, which is spelling danger signs well, for the Australians. Just on that, Val, Paul, while you're covering off on those results, Australia have now two bowls past the jack. So yep. Sophie Faulkner, uh, sorry, Sophie Tolchard hitting that bowl of Christina Christics behind the jack. So as it sits right now, Australia chasing a number. They've got a pretty good head to play to now. Now, a four here levels it up and actually gives Australia the advantage again over Malta. And they will have last bowl here. So that if there is an opportunity, Alan Ryan will take it. They need to get bowls past. That's the that's the that's the target now for Ellen. Yeah. So as we see here, both players having a little bit of a front and review and reverse re review of this head. So Amy Farrah, she's on the forehand here, just indicating she wants to get a bowl just where Sto Sophie's standing right now. Just get one behind, but that's still a lot of room for Ellen Ryan. I suspect she'll be. Trying to pepper this jack, trying to shift it backwards, make a little number. So this is where all the practice comes into play here, of playing all the different shots in the book. Amy Farrow, forehand it is, and we're looking at we're looking at ditch to ditch also as the hooter goes. So this one needs to reach. It's not too bad. Now That's that hooter. Shot. That Hooter went off at a very precarious time for Amy Farrow, and she did really well to to hit that. Just post it was for me. Just post it. Just. Well, Australia, Val. There's yeah. an opportunity. There is an opportunity here. England holding, well, just probably just down they are. In Australia holding one. It's tough to tell that bowl sort of at 6.30 there, but Alan Ryan... It's going to be forehand, looking to shift the jack back, get it back to that T area, make three or four. And Amy Farrow, well... Chloe Morrison watching on, emerging Jackaroo. She's loving this. And agree, imagine having such a highly regarded coach in your corner in Karen Murphy to heed advice off. It is, of course, all legal, so... Not far away here, Ellen Ryan. She wants jack movement. If she can get it, there's an opportunity... Or just dead draw. Whoa. She almost got the jack movement she was after. But the thing is now, she's going to have a clear opportunity if Amy Farrow can't put something in a good spot. Well, it's almost a case here. Um, you can go on the attack for Amy. She can, uh, when I say under the attack, I mean a really confident, positive draw. So forehand looking to turn Sophie up. And if she's under, she can touch the jack herself. Two more bowls each. Australia need a four to tie it and stay in second spot. They need a five to win it and equal England on points. England can all can go a long way to possibly ending Australia's hopes here in the women's pairs. Amy Farrow on the forehand. If it stays on, it's perfect. Just needs to work under that wing bowl. Well, she's around, so that really doesn't change the options for Australia. It might tighten up where the jack needs to go, but Alan Ryan with an opportunity to hold a tie. What a match this has been. Well, just no, The body language isn't overly positive. Just watching the players. Looks a bit short, Baz. It is short. It crashes into the front. So it's going to come down to Alan Ryan's last bowl to see what she can do. Sophie Tolchard and Amy Farrow have studied the head one last time. Try and get 
Yeah, so this one here, Val, it's a, it is a tricky one. You obviously want to put a bowl exactly, exactly where you don't want the jack to go. But once again, when you f- focus so heavily on where you want the bowl to finish, you forget about the other options that yeah. come, can come with it. So it's almost a case of you could potentially try to play a yard through Sophie Tolchard's bowl. And if you do get Sophie to- Tolchard's bowl, it goes in behind the jack. And if you miss, you've got the right weight to get around the back. So... Amy here will just have to try and bring her line in and play something something similar. And so. Sophie's body language, she doesn't mind this too much. Now, where is this going? She needs it to pull up. Yeah, that's gone into a really good spot. That has gone into a really good spot. Well, That makes things extremely difficult for Ellen Ryan. Now, she just put it in the right spot. Let's see. We can get. It's almost like the uh, the Lance Franklin thousandth goal. Of course, they're just concentrating, and it's a pretty pivotal moment. Getting a bit colder now out there. Sophie Tolchard has gone for the jacket. Alan Ryan studies the Huda has gone off. Well, it's this is it. She needs to make a four to tie it. There was an opportunity before the last bowl of Amy Farrow. Yeah, is so the, oh, the only option I can find here, Val, is somehow um, removing the bowl of Amy's and then getting the jack on the run on. So which has happened a couple of times in this match. Yeah, so if you see um if you see forehand, uh it'll be Alan Ryan's backhand. Oh yes, sorry. Work, working under the front one of Amy's, looking to get the half of the last bowl of Amy's and on the check out, on the way out, collecting the jack and running down the line with it. I can't see another way where Jack can go back and Amy's bowl not go with it. And I, I think that's the the fir- first priority is removing the bowl where w- where you don't want it to go, so removing it so it doesn't go with the jack, and then after that, how can you get the jack after that? So I can't see any other way. So looking to get the bowl on the on its face, on the small circle, get it solid, and then as you go to run out, you pick the jack up on the run through. That's the only way I can see a potential option for four or five here. Or you just clear all those bowls out. Just go big. Hit one and just clear all three. <laughs> I tried to look at that. all three. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I think the way that you've uh, you've described this, Baz, is the best way to do it for Ellen Ryan. She's gone for it. In the area for something here. Chrissy doesn't mind it here. Ellen Ryan is not far away. She almost got it and skewed the jack out. Now, Well, if she had have killed it. If she had have killed it, there was an opportunity there. One down in the end. What a great game, Val. England. Belle. Despite winning by five, that was a sensational match. And Amy Farrow and Sophie Tolshard deserve all of the applause that they get because they were well and truly tested. They lost five ends in a row to go down 11-10, scored a whopping five on N15 to break the match wide open. What a performance from the English duo. They get their revenge for Birmingham and Barry Lester. We finished the day on a pretty good note. What a clash. Yeah, edge of the seat. I haven't I haven't sat down for sort of forty five minutes, mate. I've been real really impressed with all four ladies out there. Great game, and um, yeah, a lot of lead changes, a uh, few multiples there in the end. But um, yeah, yeah, great play from everyone. I think the score probably doesn't really reflect on just how tight it was. Um, really, one multiple breaking it away at the end there. But well done to both countries, both all the players. Not only um, playing all the shots in the book, but just displaying great sportsmanship and, and doing their best for their respective countries. So, great game, ladies. Certainly, it was a fantastic match. England do their utmost to get through to the quarterfinals. Ba- Val Febo and Barry Lester will be back tomorrow morning from 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time at Broadbeach for more World Bowls Championships action. What a win it was for England. Have a great night, and we'll catch you tomorrow.